car habits. I call him the career killer in a nice way. You think about it. Him, his, his presence in the team has killed Martinelli and they killed Jesus because you think about it. You're fitting in. in now, let me finish. Martinelli can't play his best football unless he has um, Sinchenko and Jesus around him because Sinchenko plays that pass three on the needle where he gets on the shoulder of the defender from the left and cuts him, gets him on goal. And then Jesus creates chaos where he takes he takes defenders into unknown territories and that creates place for Martinelli. With Havertz on the side, there's no play with Jason. And, and basically, Sinchenko has just killed his career. He's so bad defensively that we've forgotten that the reason why he was in the side in the first place because he can play the inverted role. It gives us enough bodies Steve in midfield. Buddy. And he can Steve play that killer pass. Because he's so yeah, bad... Man. We, we, we don't killed him. That killed Zinchenko. Xhaka going killed Zinchenko. Yeah, exactly. But we don't care about Zinchenko's um, qualities anymore because defensively, what we want, we just had enough of that diagonal ball and the goal resulted from it. We've had enough of it. Bro, that is a hot take. Your whole take is basically Kai Havertz single-handedly has ruined two... No, I said it. In, I, didn't, I don't blame him. I'm just saying that him in a side, right now, we... Re we relegate relegated Jesus to a, you know, to the bench. Wait, wait. These so are you're saying three players: Jesus, Martinelli, and Zinchenko. Yeah, but you think if you, but you, but, but look at it from a footballing point of view. I'm not criticising them as their players because obviously they both come back from injury. They haven't been in the best of form. But when you when you think about how do you get the best out of Martinelli? You've watched no, Arsenal play. How do you get the best out of Martinelli? Tell me. Okay, I'm just gonna say this. I don't a hundred percent agree. Zinchenko at left back was we always needed to move away from him eventually because defensively he was always a liability, even before Kai Havertz came. So we know that was an issue. Jesus, Jesus being uh let's be honest, Jesus has not been available. Trussard last season, last season. Trossard was overtaking Jesus at times, if I'm not mistaken. No, but, Egal, you're not getting no, what no, you're but, saying. but what, am what, I wrong? What are you trying to say? No, 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 no. I hear, I hear Kenny's point. I'm just trying and, and to rebuttal with, with evidence from previous seasons. So Zinchenko, we already knew that he was a liability. Uh, Jesus, last season, did Trussard not take over in the striker position last season for Jesus? Oh, and did he not, yeah. did he not yeah. create a lot of chances for us? Hey, when Jesus came back from injury, remember Jesus came back from injury in the business end of the season. That's just... And then, look, all right, look, talk about the, let's, let's talk about the game at Anfield. You talk about the game of Eiffel. You scored the two goals. Who was involved? Jesus, Sinchenko was playing in inverted left position. Um, Jesus was playing up top. Martinelli was playing on the left. Both our goals were scored by Jesus and Martinelli, right or wrong. Martinelli gets down, the, sets up Jesus' second goal, gets on the wide right, puts a cross in Jesus' head, nods it in. The ball through for, Mar for, for Martinelli, where he uses his pace, gets past them. You know, Van Dyke toe punts it in. I'm just saying that that's an example of, of how those three work in a tandem. No, but I, Kenny, I, I Kenny, just, I, I, I hold on, Kenny. real quick, real quick. But yeah. I think Kenny's on to something in terms of I was saying it a couple of weeks ago that Martinelli doesn't look that good when um, Havertz is the false nine, whereas when Jesus is the is the nine, he's getting lo loads of one on ones. He's getting a bag of chances, which is why he was one of the reasons why he was our top scorer in the Premier League with, with Odegaard last season. Whereas, no, but that, that, that. where so I think Martinelli's strength comes from when he's playing with Jesus because he opens up a lot of space for him and they get into different pockets for each other. But so I prefer Trossard and Havertz to play together in the team rather than Havertz and Martinelli because Trossard and 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 Havertz able to combine quite well together. Similar to Jesus and Martinelli. That's why I, 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 I think Martinelli uh, this season has has been poor at finishing. And as much as we can it's criticize, not, no, that's a as much as, as much as as much as we can talk about, as much as we can talk about uh, the minutes that he's played or the lack of minutes that he's played and all the other things, he's just he's been missing a lot of chances. And because he's not been on hit for missing a lot of chances, and also maybe where he's taking the chances from. We can try to blame Kai Havertz, but the reality is Trussard's taking his chances. 
Trossard's in that position and he's still scoring goals. So it's, it's it, it, we can say it's a system thing and certain players are suited better. But I think Martinelli has been poor. No, no, do you know what I, 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 I don't think, think he's getting the same type of chances he was getting last season. To play in a game bro, season. we're putting it on our plate for him. He should nah, have scored against bro. Chelsea. He should have scored against Bournemouth. He, uh, no, no, I mean, bro, Brighton. You guys, he didn't you guys, you guys look, you're overly simplifying or complicating the situation, right? The simple answer is the, the way that teams have set up against us from last season to this season is with more respect. There's not enough space in behind. The problem with Martinelli is he hasn't evolved his game. If you look at Martinelli, he's still, you know, based on chaos. He's still based on, there's no rational thinking in what he does. He's an unthink player. He's not an intelligent footballer. That's not a bad thing. That's just how he plays. There's certain players who who are just chaos creators, and that's one of them. But the problem that you get with a Martinelli, in let's say, let's, let's compare him to someone similar age to him in Bukayo Saka, both in the same system. The reason why Saka can thrive in a system like this is because when things are going against him, he's a bit more intelligent in the decisions he makes when he crosses the ball, when he plays the one-twos, when he does, when he drops deep, when he comes inside. The problem with Martinelli is, as good as he is, he's one-dimensional. That's the part of the problem I've always had with him. He's a direct winger who needs to be inside, and that's why he needs the likes of Xhaka, who can carve that space for him. He needs the likes of Declan Rice maybe playing the left eight, and he needs a Zinchenko there. Just the only reason is this isn't against him, but this is a learning curve for him because he has had a year year out for an injury, which has kind of hampered how much of a progression he can make. Saka, fortunate for him, he's been able to kind of now his biggest problem is how does he get the double team? How does he kind of make sure that he's still having an impact whilst being double, triple, whatever team like being targeted? That's Saka's next evolution. Martin Ennis says, how do I change my game when it's not going for me? When do I become a touchline winger? When do I come inside? When do I, you know, get the players around me to play better for me? It's not all about like Havertz playing or Jesus playing. It's about the system has evolved. How do I evolve with it? And unfortunately, he hasn't learned quick enough. And you can see that Arteta is taking him out. He's not changing the system to cater for Martinelli. Martinelli needs to cater for the system. Rice is coming. Party is coming in. And that's why I mm. truly believe it's it's as simple but, as that. But, but Souls, wasn't our manager trying to replace him in January? Because, his, you know, like I said, recent history has shown that if you pay big money for a player... You will, you'll, you'll try and get him into the side as quickly as you can, and try and use him in different positions. Now, we were prepared to pay eighty million pounds for Mudrick. Now, by all means, talk. By all means, focus on the present, which is Chelsea form. But also look back on the intention and why why Mikel was trying to sell it. Because had Mudrick, you know, chosen us and we gave him the wages he wanted, he would have started ahead of Martinelli. Especially if we were paying eighty million pounds for him, and so the things that you concern. If you said he's one dimensional, I've say, stated that he. I've alluded to that on other shows with Miguel, which Miguel's been um, on with me before. So, are Miguel we saying? Are we? Are we saying that Martinelli? That moving forward, there's better out there than Martinelli. Do we sell Martinelli and recruit the money in order to? No, that's a question I'm asking. This, no, let, I'm not me, saying let me that. answer. No, wait, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay, you, sorry, you, 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 that, I jumped the question off because if we're a top side, like my, you think about it, you say no, no, no. But Man City sold Morris and they sold Sterling, and they, you know, they sold Sterling won the Champions League. They sold Morris, and we we fear that they're going to win the league, and we we think that they're going to smash Martin at May United. So they've done the double. So what I'm trying to say, the best teams is two in, two out. And if they feel that there's a position where they can upgrade, regardless of who the players in, they go and take that chance. And I'm saying, is Martinelli in that in that kind of stratosphere? Is he that? Are we thinking that? This is what I'm saying. Anybody in the chat, let me know. What do you think? Also, what's wrong with Martinelli? Uh, this is what we're talking about, Elmaris. Personally, for me, Martinelli this season has has the the system didn't suit him, and he hasn't been effective, and he hasn't finished his chances. Next season, he's still going to be part of this team. He still has a big role in the squad. We're not Martinelli. All of a sudden, is not expendable, in my opinion. Trusthard is twenty nine years old. He's closer to his end of his his time. Martinelli still has a long shelf life with Arsenal. I'm not looking to give up on Martinelli personally. For me, number two, 
The reason why he's been ineffective and the reason why he's not been taking as many quality chances is because of the midfield and the number nine and that left side being very isolated. If you look at where he is on the pitch, he's always the most isolated player in the team. If I can get you guys the Soka score like team sheet, show you guys. Well, when was the last time Martinelli even started? Because he's had less minutes this season also. When was the last time he started? He started He started both games against Bayern. And we we played him on the on the preface. And guess what? The Martin Odegaard and all the majority of the chance creation for 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 uh, for him. Look at this. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna show you guys his heat map last season, and you guys are gonna see exactly what the issue is. Look at last season's heat map, and look at how close he is to where he got majority of his goals. This is where he got a lot of his goals last season in that in this area of the pitch, right? Now look at this season's heat map compared to last season. Very uh, a lot more, a lot less opportunities in this area. Do you see the difference? So well, that's what I was trying to. That's, that, 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 but that's what I was trying to tell you, Igor. Like he's not look getting the, the same the level. As, he's not getting the same level of quality chances. Look at how. Season. Look at how. Look at how much uh, you can see. He's more of an inside forward. The, I've last always season. said it. Look, Mar Martinelli is a striker. He's you? not a winger. You see that? Um, like, okay. Okay. That's so. It's me and you on the same page. That I've always seen him finishing through the middle. Like that's why. That's why I see him because he's not. He's not got enough to his game to be a winger, winger. But as he's young, learn your trade, then move to the middle. I always saw it being. And yeah, he is one dimensional, which is why he needs, for example, a Jesus to open up the space for him or a Zinchenko to, to play over the top. That That's why. But if he doesn't, like, unfortunately, if he doesn't play in the side of a Jesus, for example, he doesn't, he's not going to look as effective as he is. But if, if, if you, for example, look at look at what was the game that he came on and scored two goals? Is that Palace? Yeah. Palace. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so he he was getting a bag of those type of chances last season, and we know one on one, Even Jay, this season um, against Martinelli, Chelsea. Martinelli with those type of chances, he's he's, he's putting it away. Bro. He's putting that chance away. So uh, uh, let I me, think let me get... I think still keep still still keep him at a club. He's got a lot of potential. He's still young, and I think finish him. He's the best fit. He's uh, him and Trossard are the best two finishers at the club right now for me. Facts. Uh, okay, let's get let's get uh, Deo and Elmadis in the building. What are you guys saying? Um, we've kind of spoken a lot about Martinelli. I'm going to kind of shift the conversation away from Martinelli for a second. Did you guys see the new Arsenal kits? Did yeah, I don't like the I don't like the green the green colors with the logo and the sides. Uh, I don't Bro, like that. the new kits. I'm not a fan. I'm going to show you guys right now, and you guys are you guys are probably going to be like, what are we looking at? So first, what I'm going to be showing you guys is the home kit. This, thank you for watching. This has been EGL Talks Football. If you enjoyed that video, please do make sure you hit that like button, subscribe button. Check out these next two videos right here on each side of me. And of course, you can subscribe right there. Have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day, night, evening, whatever time it is for you that you're watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that like button. Peace.